Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. In part one of our odometer tutorial, we talked about how to set up and animate the numbers on an odometer. However, we discovered that because each number section on an odometer rotates at a different speed, animating those numbers by hand can become painful. But fear not, my friends, we're about to harness the awesome and mighty powers of expressions. Now, if you aren't interested in learning about expressions, you can just skip part two and just use the presets that I'll be creating for part three of this tutorial. No one will ever know. And if you can live with yourself, well, it's fine by me, but 20, 30 years from now, you may have regrets about not having watched this. So sad. For those of you brave souls sticking it out, let's get to it. Now, here's the thing. We ultimately want to create a situation in which every number section of our odometer cycles at 10% or one-tenth the speed of the layer to its right. So for example, every time the 1's column goes from 0 to 9 and then back to 0, then the 10's column should only go from, say, 0 to 1 or 1 to 2. And every time the 10's column cycles from 0 to 9 and back to 0 again, the 100's column should also only change from one number to the next. You would think that automating this process wouldn't be that hard. The math itself is pretty easy. But it turns out that the offset effect has a bug where after you reach a certain amount of offset, it stops working properly. I'm not going to give you the sad, sad details of how I killed a better part of a Saturday night figuring all this out, but I'll ask you to take my word for it so that we can move on. So, with a Saturday night killed by obsession, I went to my expression guru, creative cow leader Dan Eberts, for help in figuring out a solution. Dan, as usual, came through. More on that in a moment. If you recall in part one, at the very end of the tutorial, I added animation keyframes to our ones column to demonstrate the offset effect. But I've gotten rid of those keyframes because instead of animating the layer directly, we'll be animating everything through an expression controller on a null object. You can learn more about expression controls in my recent three-part tutorial covering them in depth. I've also renamed my numbers precomps to their column name, so we've got a ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands column. The final change I made here is that I added in a red solid to use as a visual guide, but it's not something we'll keep in our final animation. So let's add a null object to the composition by choosing Layer, New, Null Object. Then select the null and choose Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control. In the Effects panel, right click on the effect property called Slider and from the pop-up choose Edit Value. In the slider dialog, you'll notice that you have the option of changing the slider range values, meaning that you can control what values are at both ends of the slider. I'm going to set the left side to 0 and the right side to 10,000. I'm choosing 10,000 because 10,000 is the number that brings us all the way back to 0. Remember, on our odometer, it'll go from 0 to 9,999. The next number is 10,000, but it becomes 0. When we're done setting this up, the numbers on this slider are going to match the numbers of our odometer perfectly. Click OK to confirm and exit the dialog. Next, select our ones column and hit E to reveal all effects, in this case, offset. Twirl down the offset effect to reveal the effects properties. Again, the property that we're interested in is the one called Shift Center 2, and in particular, the second part of that numerical array, the offset for the y-axis. Alt-click, or if you're on a Macintosh, Option-click on the Shift Center 2 property stopwatch to add an expression, delete the current expression, and then add the code you're seeing here on your screen. Rather than going really deep here, which could take a while, the short explanation goes something like this. The first three lines of our code are a definition of terms. Hmm, let me just give some background here. When we're working with properties like scale or position that have more than one value, then we have what's called an array. In simple terms, that's an object or property, like position or scale, with multiple values that are separated by commas. To avoid confusion, After Effects gives each part of the array a name in the form of a number. If you're working with 3D position, where you have three values in the array, and that's X, Y, and Z, then position X would be referred to as value 0, Y would be referred to as value 1, and Z would be referred to as value 2. Keeping in mind that these numbers are not the actual values for position X, Y, and Z, but rather just the names for each of those values. So now that we understand this, let's take a look at that code again. The first line of our code says x equals value 0. This is very simple. 
It means that the term or variable called x is equal to the first value of this property. Now remember, we're working with the shift center to property here, and it has two values, a value for x and a value for y. Our first line of code says that the variable called x is equal to whatever value is written here in the shift center to's x value. Next, we have another variable that we've created called offset, which is equal to whatever value we have in the slider we've added to our null layer. But that's not all. We've also added this JavaScript modulus operator, which looks like a percent sign along with the number 10. This takes the value of the slider and divides it by 10, and whatever is the remainder, that's the number. If you're not sure what I mean, think of it this way. You remember from grade school that if one number doesn't divide evenly into another, a remainder is produced? For example, 2 goes into 7 three times with a remainder of 1. So the result of 7% 2 is going to be 1. In our case, with 10 being the magic number in our remainder formula, x can never reach a value of 10. It can go from 0 to 9.999, etc., but as soon as it hits 10, there's no remainder, so the number jumps back to 0. Well, didn't I sound smart there for just a minute? But then again, it's hard not to when you're using words like JavaScript modulus operator. Okay, back to work. Remember like a good few weeks ago in an earlier podcast called Expression Tips Number 1, I explained how the linear function works? If you don't, please check it out. I covered the linear function in depth there specifically so that I would not have to do it again here because there's just too much to say about it. But I will give you the very basics. In our next line we've introduced another temporary variable, y, whose value is being generated by a linear function. Linear, as I covered previously, is an extremely useful function that translates one range of values to another. A good way to understand what's happening here is to read it from left to right like this. As the value of offset varies from a range of 0 to 10, convert that value to fit within the range of 1500 to 0. To put things in perspective, this means that when offset is equal to 0, y will be equal to 1500. When offset is equal to 10, y will be equal to 0. When offset is 5, y will be 750 because 5 is dead center of 0 through 10, and 750 is dead center between 0 and 1500. To get really precise here, for every whole number we gain in the offset variable, the linear function is subtracting 150. So offset going from 0 to 1 means that y goes from 1500 to 1350. Again, that's a difference of 150. And if 150 sounds familiar, it should. As I mentioned in part 1 of this tutorial, each number in our numbers precomp occupies its own 150 pixel by 150 pixel space. We can use this change of 150 units to offset our numbers precomp by 150 pixels, or speaking visually, to go from one number to the next. I also want to mention something about the order of the number in our linear function. In our case, we're saying that the value for offset, which always falls between 0 and 10, should be converted to a value between 1500 and 0. Now, if we're trying to take a range of values that go from 0 to 10 and convert them to a range between 0 and 1500, shouldn't we write the last two parameters as 0, 1500, not 1500, 0? Normally, yes, but the offset effect works in such a way that as I offset down, or rather, as I offset towards a lower value, the numbers visually move up the screen. And while in any other instance you could arrange the numbers in reverse so that the numbers went from 9 down to 0, since we're trying to simulate the cycling of numbers like an odometer, that means keeping the numbers in the visual arrangement that I've currently got them in. Anyway, since for our purposes we need the numbers to be offset down, not up, we need to reverse the range of values to go from 1500 to 0. Now all of this, all of the lines of code that we've just created are just shorthand or a definition of terms for what's going to be coming up in the next line. The next line takes all of the code that we've written above and translates it into XY coordinates that the offset effect can use. Okay, so now that you have a pretty basic understanding of how this works, we have to do it for every other number column. Uh, but don't worry, this part is really easy. Select the Shift Center to property on our Ones column and choose Edit, Copy. And then select the Tens column and choose Edit, Paste. With the Tens column still selected, 
hit EE to reveal all expressions, and then go into the expression and change the percent 10 to percent 100. And here in the linear operation, change the 10 to 100. This makes the entire expression work with a range of values from 0 to 100 instead of 0 to 10. And the end result is that the 10's column will offset at 10% of the speed of the 1's column. Now do the same thing for the 100's column, but make it percent 1,000 and 1,000. And then do the same thing for the 1,000's column, but make it percent 10,000 and 10,000. Anyway, jumping ahead in time where everything's been set up, now as I animate the offset slider, the numbers rise. And not just that, the numbers on the slider match the numbers here at the area right below the center of our composition. I'm talking, of course, about this red area that I've got highlighted here. So if I typed 2,500 in the slider, the numbers in this red area read 2,500. Now you can see that the thousands column is halfway between the 2 and the 3. And that's because the 500 falls halfway between the 2,000 and 3,000 value. That's just the way the math works. So you're always going to have numbers that are not perfectly aligned as they move up. On the other hand, if you're one of those people that prefers the numbers on their odometer to work in the way that you're seeing now, and that's so that the numbers on the left side don't change until the numbers on the right side are going from 9 to 0 and starting the cycle over, then you'll be happy to know that Dan Ebert sent me an expression that will do just that. So now, if you type something really random like 2348, you'll actually see 2348. Now that is a beautiful thing. Oh, and uh, I'm not even going to try to explain that expression, by the way. Anyway, we're not done. I want this to look like an odometer, and this doesn't. So a little framing, a little 3D and lighting, and perhaps some internal shadows wouldn't hurt. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah, I thought so. Well, we'll do all of that next time. By the way, if I've whet your appetite for expressions, check out the feast at Dan Ebert's Expression Lab, which you can find at www.motionscript.com. Don't forget, you can get the files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AE podcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.